Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSC. This video is on Chapter 1, States of Matter. There are two parts for this video. First, we will go through the key concept of this chapter. And next, we will try to answer some questions from past papers. In this chapter, we will go through the properties and structure of solid, liquid and gas, kinetic theory, heating and cooling graph, and finally diffusion. We'll start with the most basic, which is the properties and structure of solid liquids and gases. As you can see the structure of solid, they are arranged regularly and closely packed together. Therefore, they have a fixed shape and they do not flow. They can only vibrate in their fixed position and the particles are held together by a strong force, hence leading this to a very small amount of kinetic energy. They are also highly dense. Next, for the structure of liquid, you can see that they are mostly touching, however, there are still some gaps between them, causing them to move about at random, which enables them to flow easily and take the shape of the container. The medium forces between these particles lead to a moderate amount of kinetic energy. And lastly, for gas, you can see that the particles are far apart, so they move randomly and quickly. Hence, they have no fixed volume or shape. The weak forces between the particles leading to high amount of kinetic energy and collision with each other. Even at the same volume of solid and liquid, gases has a smaller density. Next, we're moving on to heating and cooling graphs. These curves can be drawn for any substances that go through a change of state from a solid to liquid and a liquid to gas. At its lowest temperature, the substance remains as a solid and the solid warms up as the temperature rises. Once it reaches the melting point or freezing point, the change of state occurs where the solid finally converts into liquid and the temperature does not change at this moment. This happens because the heat is used up to break the bond between the particles to change its state from solid to liquid. After completely changing to the liquid state, when the temperature rises again, the liquid starts to warm up. At this part of the graph, the evaporation occurs as well. Now, when the temperature reaches its boiling point, the liquid finally turns into steam, which is the form of gas. And the graph is drawn in horizontal line until it is completely changed into gas. And if there is another line drawn, then it will just show that the gas gets hotter as the temperature rises. And the graph that works on the opposite side is a cooling graph. It starts from the highest temperature as a gas. And as the temperature decreases, the gas starts to cool down. And when the temperature remains constant, the gas will convert into its liquid form. Once it has completely converted into liquid, the liquid will start to cool down, reaching its freezing point. And this is when the liquid starts to form into solid. The temperature will remain constant here in a horizontal line until the liquid is completely converted into solid. And if there is another line draw, it means that the temperature of the solid is further cooling down. And the reason why substances change state can be explained in the terms of kinetic theory. Firstly, let's look at melting when solid turns into liquid. During melting, the particles gain kinetic energy to vibrate more, which causes them to move apart. And as they move apart, these forces of attraction between the particles are overcome, which then leads to the particle to move quicker and more randomly. And the same happens when liquid converts into gas, which can either be boiling or evaporation. Next, we've got gas converting into liquid, which is identified as condensation. During condensation, the particles will lose kinetic energy, which causes them to move closer together. As they move closer together, this particle starts to move slower and less randomly. And the same thing happens when liquid converts into solid, which is called freezing. Now, solid converting into gas directly is known as sublimation. Using the kinetic theory, there is another thing that you have to remember, which is how does evaporation take place. Now, evaporation only happens at the surface of a liquid. The particles in the liquid have different amounts of energy. The particles with the greatest amount of kinetic energy, which is at the top of the surface, will break away from the surface, which then leaves behind the particles that have lesser kinetic energy. And you should know that in a closed container, both evaporation and condensation can occur simultaneously. And the last part of this chapter is diffusion. Diffusion is known as the net movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. There are two factors that affect the rate of diffusion, its molecular mass and the temperature. And the factors that affect the rate of diffusion can be demonstrated experimentally throughout this setup. 
So we're going to use a cotton wool soaked in ammonia solution on one side and another cotton wool soaked up in hydrochloric acid on the other side. And the test tube is then sealed with a stopper. After a certain amount of time, you will be able to observe a white ring of ammonium chloride forms closer to hydrochloric acid rather than in the middle. So how did this happen? Ammonia has a lower mass of 17 compared to hydrochloric acid which is 38.5. This makes ammonia to be lighter therefore it can travel a further distance compared to hydrochloric acid. So when these two gases meet, they react together to form the white solid. So this is a proof that the lower the mass of its particle, the faster a gas can diffuse. As for temperature, the greater the temperature, the greater its kinetic energy of the particles that causes the rate of diffusion to increase, which means that it speeds up the rate of diffusion. However, it will not change the position of the white solid form. It will only cause the white solid to form faster, as the particles have now diffused faster due to the greater kinetic energy. Alright, that sums up everything important in your first chapter of States of Matter. Now, we will look into some past paper questions relating this chapter. Question 1. Particles behave differently when in different physical states. Solids have a fixed volume and a definite shape. Gases have no fixed volume and takes the shape of the container. Describe the volume and shape of liquids. So, liquids have fixed volume and it takes the shape of the container. Next question B. Complete the table to show the separation, arrangement, and movement of particles in each physical state. This is why remembering the properties and structure for each solid, liquid, and gas will come in helpful. Solids are packed closely together, therefore it touches one another. Gases are far apart from each other, so you can write it does not touch. As for the arrangement, solids are closely packed, liquids are randomly arranged, whereas gases are randomly arranged and far apart. Solids do not move, they only vibrate at its own place, and gases move randomly. Next question part C. Name the following changes of state. Ice is solid, turning into water which is liquid, is the process of melting. Next, solid carbon dioxide turning directly into gases at room temperature. Solid turning directly into gas is sublimation. Next question 2. Element X can undergo the following physical changes. You are asked to name each of the numbered physical changes as shown in figure 1.1. Number 1 is when solid turns into liquid, which is melting. Number 2 is when gas turns into liquid, that would be condensation. Number 3 is when liquid turns into solid, which is freezing. And lastly, we've got liquid turning into gas. That could be either evaporation or boiling. Next, part 2. One difference between boiling and evaporation is the rate at which the processes occur. Boiling happens at a faster rate compared to evaporation. State the other difference between boiling and evaporation. Boiling happens specifically at 100 degrees Celsius, whereas evaporation can take place at any time. For instance, if you spill a glass of water on your table, if you come back one hour later, you will notice that it is dry even though your room is at room temperature. Next question part B. Describe the separation, arrangement, and motion of particles of element X in the solid state. Again, we have the same type of question where you are tested on the properties and structure of the state of matter. Next is a question that's testing on diffusion. Concentrated ammonia solution gives off ammonia gas. Concentrated hydrochloric acid gives off hydrogen chloride gas. Ammonia and hydrogen chloride are both colorless gas. Ammonia reacts with hydrogen chloride to make the white solid ammonium chloride. The apparatus is set up as shown. Alright, so we've got hydrochloric acid on one side and ammonia solution on the other side. Basically, what happens is that hydrochloric acid will release hydrochloride gas and the ammonia solution will release ammonia gas. Now, these two gases would react with each other to form ammonia chloride, which is a white solid. It says that after 10 minutes, a white solid forms in the tube where the gases meet. So the gases travel, travel, and it meets somewhere within the range of A to D. Question A part 1. Write the chemical equation for the reaction of ammonia and hydrogen chloride. This is not exactly from chapter 1, but we can still answer them. Ammonia is NH3 and the state is gas. Hydrogen chloride is HCl and the state of matter is gas, which produces ammonium chloride, which is a solid. 
Ammonium has a charge of positive one and chloride has a charge of negative one. When they are crossed, it will form NH4Cl and the state is solid. Next question two. Name the process by which the ammonia and hydrogen gases move in the tube. So we have learned before that when particles move from an area of high concentration to low concentration, it is known as diffusion. So the process is diffusion. Next part three. At which point ABCD does the white solid form? Explain why the white solid forms at that point. Okay, so we have gone through this experiment in the theory part previously. We know that diffusion is affected by two factors and one of them is the mass. If they are lighter, it means that they can travel a further distance compared to the heavier molecule which can only travel a shorter distance because they are heavier. So when the two compounds meet and react, the smoke will form over here which is at A. So you can say that ammonia is lighter than hydrogen chloride gas, therefore it travels further towards the left side. Next part 4. The experiment was repeated at a higher temperature. Predict how the results of the experiment would be different. So the concept is going to be the same. You can say that the white solid forms at the same spot. However, the time taken for it to form will be faster. Higher temperature means the particles can move faster. Next question D. The apparatus shown was set up. After 5 minutes, a red solid appeared along the line marked S. Explain why a red solid appeared along the line marked S. So the concept is going to be the same. The particles of silver nitrate will react with the particles of ammonium dichromate when they meet over here. It shows that the particles of silver nitrate have traveled a further distance, making this a lighter compound compared to ammonium dichromate, which has only traveled a shorter distance due to its heavier mass. So for three marks, we can say that dichromate ions have a higher molecular mass compared to silver nitrate, which causes it to travel at a shorter distance. Hence, the mark is formed closer to the right side. Next question, part two. The experiment is repeated at a higher temperature. What effect, if any, would this have on the time taken for the red solid to appear? And explain your answer. So same as the previous question, the spot would form at the same place. However, as the time taken, that would be relatively shorter. And the reason is because at a higher temperature, particles move faster. Alright guys, that's all for this video. For the next video, I'll be discussing on chapter 2, Atoms, Compounds and Elements. Thank you so much for watching and I would really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to my channel. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.